Are you looking for a project that is easy to build, can develop your skills as a woodworker, still works if you make mistakes, and sells for a little bit of profit? Oh, and it needs to be able to be made out of any wood you have available. Oof. Not asking for much, are you? Don't worry, I've got the perfect project for all of that. Recently, I built a new workbench. In fact, I built this workbench right here. And if you'd like to see how I did that, I'll make sure to leave a link in the description below. But it left me with a load of two by four leftovers. And that got me wondering, you know, what could I make from those two by fours that would help me develop my skills as a woodworker, look really good, and potentially be something that I could sell? This is a three-legged stool. Um, there's lots of videos out there about it already. Paul Sellers has an excellent one and I'll make sure I link that in the pinned comments down below. But I think this is the perfect project for almost any beginner woodworker or someone just looking to improve a little while. And that is for loads of different reasons. One, as I've already said, it can be made from anything. I'm going to use leftover 2x4s but you could use some hardwoods, ash, oak, cherry, whatever you want. I'm also going to spice it up and put some hardwood wedges in mine to change the colour so I've got some dark and some light, but you can make this from whatever you have lying around, which is fantastic. Two, it's really simple to build, but it develops loads of basic techniques, and that's techniques that are really helpful to the beginner woodworker, that's techniques that are helpful to guys who are developing or branching out and trying to learn new skills, it's good for people that want to learn traditional joinery, you know what, it just, it just improves you as a woodworker, I think anyway. Um, the top is made from multiple pieces of wood, so you've got to joint those together, um, and that's great practice if you've never used a hand plane before, or even if you're, you're trying out your jointer that you've bought, or whatever it may be. The legs are mortise and tenon joints using a round wedged tenon, um, and mortise and tenon has been around for centuries. It was one of the most popular woodworking joints for a long, long time. It's super strong, it's super easy to cut, and it can be done in a variety of different methods. And if you're going to move on to, you know, making other furniture in the future, you're definitely going to want to learn this one. It requires lots of repeated accurate cuts, which is great for developing your marking, your measuring and your cutting. And finally, you need to be able to level the legs so you've actually got a flat surface. And there's a really nifty trick I'm going to show you later on, um, made popular by Rex Kruger, that makes this super, super easy to do. Three, it's mistake friendly. Being on three legs means it's always gonna stand up. It's never gonna fall or anything like that. Like it, it, it will stand. But even more so, because it's a rustic style design, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect, you know? If it looks a little bit wonky, if the legs are at different angles, if it looks beaten up because you've accidentally hit it with your saw or your chisel or gouged a piece out, that all just adds to the rustic charm of this design. And it also means the design is totally customizable to what you want it to be. And even better than that, because I'm not going to design one to make it as a functional piece of furniture, it's just going to be aesthetic. So it doesn't need to be brilliantly structurally great because I'm never going to use it for that. I mean, in my house, I use them as plant stands and they look fantastic, or we leave them by the fireplace, but they just add a really nice rustic touch to your home. And that again means it, it doesn't need to be perfect. It can be a little bit messed up and that's okay. It can be built with any tools you've got lying around. Whatever kind of woodworker you are, or whatever level you're at, I'm almost certain you'll have something that can be used to build this. And to prove my point, I'm gonna build it half with really cheap hand tools, half with even cheaper power tools, uh, and then finally, I'm gonna use some super, super expensive machines. Just kidding. This is a stock photo of someone's workshop. I can't afford any of that stuff. Maybe one day though, eh? It sells. Recently I made a video where I tried to sell some super basic builds and the only successful one I had was this stall, which I sold 10 of for £400 or $500 for my American friends. Um, and if you don't believe me, I'll link the video so you can go check it out for yourself. And finally, it's just a fun, enjoyable build. It's super easy to make, you learn loads doing it, and I think the whole point of why I'm making this video is to show that 
sometimes you just got to get started. It, does, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. Like I've already said, that's the beauty of this project. But I want to show that you don't need an expensive workshop. You don't need all the tools. And really, you don't need all the skills and knowledge. Sometimes the best thing to do is get out there, pick up a handsaw and just start making stuff. Now, I'm not a woodworking instructor and I'm not sponsored in any way by anybody, but I'm hoping that by watching me make one of these, you might find the inspiration to, to go and make something yourself or just to get started in what I think is a really fun hobby. Now, with that being said, let's get on with the build. The first thing I'm gonna do is mark these to the rough length that I want the blank I'll cut the seat out to be. I'm gonna to aim to avoid knotted areas like this. So looking at where that is on this piece, I think probably 12 inches or 30 centimeters in English money um, is gonna be good enough. With the first blank for my seat measured out, it's time to cut it out. And I'm gonna use a circular saw. I really struggle to make straight cuts with these, but what I have found is that by using a speed square as a makeshift fence and running the blade guard along it, it helps me to stay nice and straight uh, and gives me parallel cuts nearly every time. I then use the already cut piece to measure, because this allows for a human error, and any of the measuring I did before that wasn't quite accurate, means I'm measuring directly off the piece so I should get a true reflection of size as opposed to using the tape measure every single time. If I didn't have a circular saw, I would just use any hand saw I had available. In this case, I'm demonstrating using a shooting board as a fence and a, just a cheap tenon saw. One thing I do to help me achieve really precise cuts with a hand saw is I take a square, uh, run it against the line I've drawn and then use a marking knife or any old knife really to make a series of indentations. Which we can then come back at with a chisel to pop into the line and create a little tiny divot where we can rest our saw, which will keep our saw nice and straight as we then cut down. So now that I've got these cut roughly to size, the next step should be to take the rounded edges off of these two by fours. The rounded edges are really great for construction purposes because they stop you getting splinters and they stop the edges of these breaking out when they're caught on things. But when we glue these up, the rounded edges mean there'll be divots filled with glue, which are quite hard to remove. However, rather than taking all the edges off, I only want to take off the inside edges where I'm going to have to join the pieces together so I'm gonna spend a little bit of time now just playing with the layout until I find one I like, and I can mark it up, take it outside, and take the edges off of these. Let's do that. Once I've got an orientation I like, I quickly mark these up to ensure I can put them back in the right order later on. Now that everything's cut to size and I've chosen the orientation I want, it's time to remove the rounded corners. Now, ideally, I'd have a table saw to do this because it makes quick, light work of taking off the rounded edges, but I don't. So in my workshop, at least, I've got two options. I've got the electric planer, or I've got a classic vintage hand plane. This is a five and a half jack plane, as they're commonly known. Uh, it's a Stanley Bailey design, which is fantastic. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I am gonna do one with the electric hand planer outside, and then two with the vintage hand blade, just because that's my preferred method. Uh, but obviously there are loads of different ways to do this. Let's go on with that now. Normally when I use my electric hand planer, I can slot the two by four into a small gap on my saw horses. The pieces I've cut are too short to do that this time. So what I'm doing here is clamping a thinner piece of wood down to act as a planing stop. I can then butt my pieces of wood against it and it will hold it securely whilst I use the electric planer.
One thing I found really useful in hand planing is to rub a tea light along the sole of the plane and the wax just helps the plane glide smoothly across the surface of the wood. As I planed, I would routinely check against the reference face using a combination square to ensure that I was creating a parallel flat edge uh, so that I could then join this onto the other pieces that would become the stool top. With everything jointed, I then take a quick moment to check the seams and make sure there's no obvious gaps before laying out some sash clamps uh, to begin the glue up. And whilst I prep for and do the glue up, I'd like to take a moment just to ask you to click that like button down below. Uh, by liking this video, you help spread my content to other viewers and really get me into YouTube's algorithm, which helps a small little channel like me grow. And also, please click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, a small channel like myself could use every bit of support that's available, and I just love having you guys watch the stuff I'm making. And if you're enjoying it, please consider sticking around to watch more videos in the future. Thank you very much. Now that the glue's dried, and we've got the rough sort of seat blank, if you will, ready to be used for the next step, we need to mark out our circle and then cut it out to make the seat for the stool. However, before we do that, we need to get rid of all this excess dried glue that we've got. Now, there's plenty of ways we can do this, uh, including using a chisel, and this is one of those perfect opportunities for where old tools come in super handy, and where you don't want to use your expensive stuff all the time. Sometimes having a cheap tool that you can just beat up is really helpful. So we can use an old chisel, or we can use a card scraper, or we could use a putty knife, uh, and we can even use a random orbital sander if you're more into power tools. So let's go right ahead and do that now. With all the excess glue taken off, I now need to make sure I've got a smooth level surface so I can mark out the seat and get ready to cut it out. Again, whatever tools work for you are the ones you can use here. A drum sander would be fantastic or a planar thicknesser, but I don't have either of those. So the two I'm gonna to use today to show you sort of some ideas is an electric power planer and a vintage number five jack plane. Safety is key, so anyone using any machines always ensure you're wearing PPE and that you know where the blade is at all times. Let's get going. No matter what tool is used, the goal here is to achieve a flat, smooth surface with barely visible joints between your piece of wood. This leaves you with a really nice straight blank that then you can use to mark out where you're going to put your seat. You'll notice I've got a bit of snipe here from when I use the electric hand planer. This won't be an issue because once I mark out my circle for the seat, I'll just ensure that that forms part of the waist and is cut away. It's now time to start marking out the rough shape of our seat. As well as that, we're also going to lay out how far in from the edge we're going to place our legs, and then finally, where we're actually going to put each of the three legs in the stall. Now, this could be pretty daunting and seem pretty scary, but actually, it's a super easy process. First thing we have to do is find the middle. All I'm going to do to do that is take a straight edge, line it up with each corner, and make a little X, like so. And then the point where the X's meet is round about the centre of my board. A circle can be done in a variety of ways. Um, it can be as simple as taking a round object in your home, like a plate, and laying it on. Some people like to place a nail in the middle and then they'll tie a pencil to it and use that to draw out a circle. For me, I'm going to go back to um, high school mathematics and I'm just going to use a compass and a nice sharp pencil. Here I'm just drawing 45 mil in from the edge of the stool top. Uh, I'm then gonna draw out another circle. And it's on this circle I'm gonna place out my leg locations in just a moment. 
Now that I've marked out the outer shape of my circle and the inner circle I'm going to use as the reference line for where the legs are going to go, I need to place out the exact location to drill holes for my legs. And the way I'm going to do this is pretty simple. I'm just going to take my compass, place it in the centre that I've marked out and the pencil on the edge of the inner circle. Then, leaving my pencil on the edge of the inner circle, I'm going to walk the compass point out till it's also touching the circle and then I'm going to walk it round six times and every two of those times I'm going to make a mark and that's going to give me the exact place where I need to put a leg. You can also do this um, using degrees but I was never very good at maths and this works out just fine for me so I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So that's now my shape drawn out and really interestingly and I'm sure someone who's good at maths in the comments might be able to tell me why this works but these six walks I did with my compass that's left me with my three leg locations actually when you use the compass and step between them like this, you should end up exactly back at the start and that tells you your legs are equally spaced out. Um, if anyone's a math genius, please let me know how that works because I don't understand it, but it's a very useful trick. Now that I'm ready to cut the circle out that's going to eventually form the top or the seat of my three-legged stool, it's time to look at all the different ways that we can do this. Now, like everything in woodworking, there are loads of loads of ways that this can be achieved. Um, but we're going to look at sort of four or five and then I'm going to demonstrate using two of them. The first and most obvious answer is of course the bandsaw. Super easy, super smooth and super effective and frankly really quick. A bandsaw would be a perfect choice for cutting a round shape uh, out from especially construction lumber which is nice and soft. But unfortunately I don't have one of those so I can't demonstrate how to do that. The second would be a handheld router. So a plunge router uh, specifically, or I suppose you could use a trim router if it has a plunge stand that you could put on like the DeWalt cordless one does. I don't have one of those either, but they would be super easy to use and there are a multitude of tutorials out there for making jigs that allow you to cut out a circle, much in a similar way to how we discussed using a nail and a, a pencil to draw a circle. There's similar jigs that allow you to cut a circle out with a router, just lowering the bit a little by little each time until you've cut the full shape out. And the best thing about that is it will require minimal tidy up afterwards as well. But for the more budget guys out there, myself included, we're more likely to have either a jigsaw or a handsaw. So, a jigsaw is the third choice. Really budget friendly and a lot of DIYers will have one of these in some form around their house. This particular one is a really cheap 25 pound or I suppose $30 model. Um, again, really good for cutting curves and we're gonna use this to cut half of this stool out in a minute. And then the last option is of course a handsaw. So this is a Japanese Ryoba pull saw. Um, you can also use a tenon saw or a panel saw. Any handsaw will do really. Uh, and the way we're gonna do that is slightly different to how we'd use the machines, but don't worry, because I'm gonna show you in just a minute. And I'll quickly just jump in here and say that there will be links to all the tools I've mentioned and other tools I both use and recommend in the description below. If you click on them and then make a subsequent purchase, I do receive a small commission for this, but it comes at absolutely no cost to you uh, and it really helps support me in keeping making up these videos. So please have a click, have a look, and many thanks. So for the second half, I'm going to cut out the circle using a handsaw. And cutting a circle out using a handsaw isn't particularly difficult, it just requires a different approach to what you'd use with power saws and it's slightly more time intensive. And all I'm going to do, really easy, is I'm just going to repeatedly cut each corner off and then continue to cut the further corners that appear off until it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and eventually you end up with a roughly rounded shape. You don't need to worry about being super accurate here because you can then go around and clean it up later on with some of the other methods we'll use. It takes a little bit more time, but I'm going to go with that now. I'm going to start just by drawing some straight lines to help guide where I'm going to aim to cut. After a little bit of time and effort, we have got our rough circle 
shaped out. However, much like when I was at school, I have clearly had trouble staying within the lines. Um, so now what we need to do is sort of tidy this up, neaten it up and turn it into the final shape it's going to look like. So bring everything up to the edge and make it nice and clean. With regards to machines, this is a perfect job for a disc sander or a belt sander if you've got one. Um, as well as that, you could use a flush trim bit on a router if you had a template. So what I've got for those is a random orbital sander. So a random orbital sander with a, quite an abrasive grit on it, maybe an 80 grit, will be absolutely perfect for taking this edge down nice and neatly to the line. But I also have the woodworking secret weapon. This is a Shinto rasp. These are super cheap and super affordable and probably one of the best kept woodworking secrets out there. You don't need an expensive brand um, and these have a coarse side and a fine side and they are amazing for rounding off edges and taking off material really, really fast. If you're gonna take any of my opinions away from this video, Shinto Rasp, cheap, effective, incredible piece of kit uh, and I'll make sure I leave a link for one of these in the description below. Grab one and check it out for yourself. You can see here just how quickly the Shinto Rasp is able to work the rough edges down to the layout lines themselves. I'm actually really glad I bought one of these. It used to take me significantly longer using my hand plane and the spoke shave uh, and I see this as a real cheap but effective investment. Now with hand tools aren't your thing, obviously the random orbital sander with a low grit sandpaper on works just as well for tidying up those high spots um, as you can see me demonstrating here. With the circle now down to its layout line, I decided to round over the edges on both sides. Obviously a router would be the ideal choice for this, uh, but for me I used a metal file for those of you that want to do it with a hand tool or a really cheap option. Uh, and for those of you guys that are more into power tools, the random orbital sander is just as effective here. Again, with about an 80 grit sandpaper, it will quickly round the edges over for you. The only thing you may have to deal with is they just won't be quite as uniform as if you used uh, a round of it. With all that done, the stool top is essentially finished and it's time to drill the leg holes. Now, power drill with a force and a bit is a great choice for this, but I'm going to go old school and use a brace and bit. There's a lot of debate online about what angle is best for the legs, but as a reminder, we're not turning this into a sturdy piece of furniture. This is a design to build our skills and to just for an aesthetic piece for around the house. The key thing you want to do here though is to try and keep the angles consistent. So if you're going for straight legs or slightly kicked out legs or extremely kicked out legs, you want to try and maintain the same angle when drilling all three holes. You'll also notice here that I drill in from the front and the back of the wood and that's because on softwood like pine that I'm using here, you may run the risk of blowing out the other side from what you drill into. So just be careful of that when drilling your leg holes. Just like that, we've got a lovely finished top of our stall, as you can see with clean holes running all the way through at the correct angle with no breakout, which is exactly the reason why you saw me flip it around and then drill through from both sides rather than just drilling through from one side, especially on a softwood like this, it's gonna break out everywhere if you don't take that precaution. But this, this is now done. For the legs, I took two 12 inch off cuts and ripped them down the middle. This actually gives me four leg blanks when I only need three. That's great because it means I've got a spare one in case I mess up. Then with my combination square, I'm gonna take the thickness of the seat top and add a little bit extra. This is gonna tell me how long I need each of my tenons to be, and then I'm just gonna transfer this across onto my leg blanks. Next, I'm gonna take the same drill bit I used to make the leg holes, and that's super important, and I'm gonna drill a tiny, tiny indentation on the top of each leg. And this is gonna show me the diameter of each tenon that I need to cut. It's really important that I use the correct drill bit so that I get the same size tenon for the hole in the leg. Off camera, I've used a saw and made some light cuts on the line I transferred onto the leg earlier. This is known as a stop cut. So when I take a hammer and chisel, which we'll see in a second, and strike it on top of the leg, it's gonna split down to that line and no further. This is gonna give me a nice clean tenon without splitting the leg all the way down. 
Now, much like I did when I was cutting the circle out, I'm gonna to proceed to knock off the corners each time until I slowly end up with a rounded shape. I'm then gonna use a chisel to pare down uh, and take a hard wood block with a hole in it the same size that my tenon needs to be and press that on top to check whether or not it fits. I'll then take it off, adjust and repeat as necessary until I end up with a nice round tenon and I can move on to the other two legs. Shaping the legs once I've done the tenons was no different to the other methods we've discussed so far in this video. A bit of hand planing and a bit of a random orbital sander. So with all that done, I then cut some hardwood wedges out of Sapili. You could still use leftover 2x4 for this if you want. Doesn't matter, I just like the contrast in woods. And just like that, we're ready to move on to glue up. I've now got my legs with their respective wedges for their tenons attached and I've marked up each hole in the stool top and ran it on a corresponding leg that I've already checked fits. Now for the glue up, what I'm gonna do is apply some glue to the inside of the mortises and the outside of these tenons here. Uh, I'm gonna be quite sparing with this because if I use too much, it will block the hole and make it harder to put the tenon through uh, and it's already quite a tight joint. Then I'm gonna put the leg into its respective hole and then apply more glue to the wedge and hammer it in from the top. Once the glue is dry, I just cut off the excess parts of the tenon uh, and the stool top is just about finished with a little bit of sanding to tidy it up perhaps. And now it's time to level the feet. To level the feet, I just pop a spirit level on top of the stool, shim the legs up as you can see on the left leg here, and then take a flat piece of wood with a pencil on top and use that as a scribe to mark a perfect cut line. After cutting the legs off camera, it is time to do some final sanding and rounding over the bottom of the now level legs, again with some abrasive sandpaper on a random orbital sander. Then I work my way up the grits from 80 to 120 to 180 to 240. And the stool is ready for finish. For finish, I applied a couple of coats of Danish oil. Um, any finish will do, but I just really like how this interacts with the wood. But I'll stop talking now because the best part is about to come up, and that is watching your project truly come to life as the grain pops. just like that our project is finished. Now I really really hope you've enjoyed this video and you've seen that actually without all the expensive tools or even all the knowledge and skills you can create a really really nice project that is completely and utterly uniquely yours. Now if you haven't already please click that like and share button and please subscribe to my channel so you can catch my future videos. But before you go if you're looking for more minimal tool builds and maybe a stall isn't the one for you why not head over to Start Making, when Mark has just made a lovely jewellery box using only a handsaw. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.